All right, so let's go ahead with a quick recap of PLC Fiddle and PLC programming in general. First, when you go to plcfiddle.com, you will be welcomed with this website. Um, and it has a default latching program already written. So as you can see, if we click the start button, the motor turns on and stays on. We hit the stop button, the motor turns off and stays off. All right. However, the first thing I want to go over is you can't just delete our inputs or outputs right off the bat if they are being used in your program. Remember, you have to come to the other tab and get rid of them. Now, you can delete a whole row at once, and then we can delete everything. Um, but you, or you can delete things individually, but you need to delete the in the code before you can delete them on the side. Next, I always suggest just adding a whole bunch of rungs because that way it keeps you from having to come back to this other tab as often. Next, let's talk about creating tags. All right, so up in the top left hand corner, we do have an add button. We have right now it's set to Boolean. All right, so this is our data type here. We're going to come back to that a little later this semester. But let's go ahead and let's leave it as Boolean. Go ahead and create a few buttons. Uh, two, and we'll make a button three as well. And then we're going to go ahead and make an output one and an output two just to have it. All right, so really easy to create them. If you want to create a timer, you'd come down here to timer and go ahead and select uh, and type in its name. I'm going to call mine T1. And if you want to make a counter, you can do the same thing. I'm going to call mine C1. Just make sure you get that data type correct. Um, we also are going to head and go ahead and create a oh, go back to Boolean data type. Uh, one, one shot memory and one shot output. All right, so there we go. We've got created a whole bunch of different tags. So if we want to just use a timer, we'll just go ahead and we'll throw a button in. So we have our normally open contacts. Remember, we call those makes. We have our normally closed, which we call breaks. And this little R here is our rising edge detection for our one shot. So just you know, keep those three straight. Um, well, let's just go ahead and throw a coil in. So we have our normal coil output. We have our latching, which will stay true until the unlatch becomes true. All right. Um, so we can just make this our output one. Anytime I turn button one on, you see that happens. All right. Now, if we make this, let's go ahead and make this a latch for button two. So now once I hit button one, no oh, button, button two, output two. There we go. You can see output two stays on even though button one turns off. The only way to get that to become false is to go ahead and put a coil, we'll go button two there. So if I turn button one on, I'll put two latches. If I turn it off, button two on latches. So nice simple latching right there. All right, let's go ahead and just get rid of those. Add some more rungs. We also have timers. So if we come in here, our timer, we have remember, we have on delay, off delay, and retentative. Remember, there are three differences. Um, so you can remember what those are or look those up. Um, if we go ahead and label this T1, we come down and look at our T1 by using a little drop down arrow. You can see our enable, our timer timing, our done bit, our accumulated time, and our presets. So if we make presets, say 10 seconds, and we go ahead and make this back to button one. You'll see anytime I press button one, the timer starts to count. We can see that by the accumulated. And once we get to the value of 10, Q will become true and TT will become false. Remember, if you are doing this on Siemens, we don't have that TT bit. You have to make it yourself using a make and a break. So it would be a make, enable, a break, done. And that will be the same idea as the timer timing. So if we go ahead, Let's go ahead and turn the timer off. We'll count. Notice output 2 is on right now. And it'll stay on as long as 10 seconds counts. And then you'll see that timer time will go off, key will be on, and output 2 will go off. So we can make those even though we don't always have access to them. Counters, same idea. We do have a count up, we do have a count down. All right. Remember in Fiddle, we don't have a count up down. And if you try to, to trick it out by uh, just doing one of these deals right here, Button one, button two. Let's go ahead and look at our counter. Once I click a button, you'll notice it just keeps counting and counting and counting and counting and counting. So you have to actually use a one shot in front of these. All right. So we could go ahead and do that. We could throw a little one shot action in there. I'll just do one shot memory at this point. So now button one will only count up one. Hold. If I click button two, you'll see it just constantly counts down because we didn't put that one shot on there. All right. So one shots. 
great little tool. Now we don't have the one shot like we do in Siemens World, so sometimes you have to do it on its own rung. So this is our one shot memory. Notice we don't have that one shot output. So if you wanted to have that output as a memory, you'd have to do something like this. Um, and then we could do our one shot output there. And this one you will actually see, and button two is fine, uh, you actually see it trigger. All right, remember, PLC fiddle doesn't run as fast as actual PLCs do. So that's why our, our timers get to funky numbers and other things like that. So that is a little quick overview of PLC fiddle. Hope it helped if you forgot.